Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is staying safe out there and we will continue to do our virtual programming um, with, um, with UGA Extension. And we hope you've been joined so far. Um, this is week three of our um, Tasty Success Theme Kitchen, where um, Rebecca and um, other um, will come in, or other um, of her coworkers will come in and do different um, activities and also different recipes. And we will read a book that coincides with that recipe. So we hope you've been enjoying it so far. And today our theme is tomatoes. And so we're gonna let Rebecca explain more about what she's going to do and what Miss Mary Beth is going to do. And we'll come back later to read a story. So hi guys, I'm Becca Stackhouse and I am the Family and Consumer Science County Extension Agent for the University of Georgia and I am out of Chris County. And then Mary Beth is joining us out of Rockdale County. And so I'm gonna share with you about our recipe and then Mary Beth is gonna talk about some picky eater tips. So stick around for hers. Um, but what we do with the University of Georgia is we bring you research-based information and we bring it to you in an unbiased way. And so we are going to share with you some nutrition facts, some education, and that is what we're going to get started. So before we start with the recipe, I'm going to let Mary Beth introduce herself. Awesome. Thanks so much, Becca. I am thrilled to be part of Tasty Success. Um, I work in Rockdale County, Conyers, Georgia, which is in Metro Atlanta. Um, and I just really like making healthy eating seem fun and doable for people of all ages. So. Um, we'll be talking about some ways to make healthy foods more fun for kids, which in adult speak is picky eating tactics, but you don't have to say that for the principles to be true. So we start, I'm going to wash my hands. You gotta get that 20 seconds in to really get all the germs and things that you're worried about off. Even if your hands are already clean, you never know. The fun thing about starting. So today's recipe isn't gonna take us very much. It's very simple, um, but it is based off of tomatoes. And so we're gonna start with, we've got tomatoes here. And so we've got two cans of diced tom tomatoes, and then we have a can of crushed tomatoes. We've got five ounces of spinach, some zucchini, about one, two small zucchinis. Then we've got our lasagna noodles. We have got our spices, our cheese, and then an egg. So we are going to, I went ahead and broke our egg into one. We're gonna mix our egg up and it's actually gonna go in here with our veggie mixture. So we've got our veggie mixture right there. Mix it in just a little bit. So we've got fresh spinach today, five ounces of that. Spinach is a great place to get some of your vitamins in. Uh, you can eat it in multitudes of ways. And then we've got our tomatoes. And so all of our tomatoes were canned tomatoes. And so we're gonna add Italian herbs to it and garlic to it. So we had three tablespoons of garlic and then about two tablespoons of the herb. We're gonna add a teaspoon of salt and a little bit of red pepper. And the red pepper is an optional spice. So if you want to leave that with spice, you can leave that spice out. So we're gonna give those a mix together. And then, we're gonna start layering. So. This is, you will turn your crock pot on for, you can put it on low for three hours. No, on high for three hours or low for five hours. So whichever way you wanna go. Um, you're gonna see in a second, the one that I made earlier, I didn't have the kind of, I didn't have double lasagna. So we actually used penne pasta. So you'll see what that looks like, but we're just going to start with layering. Well, we may have to break our pasta in half so we can actually fit it in our bowl. So we're gonna add our lasagnas in here. So you're gonna layer it. So this is where you can get your kids help of helping you lay the pasta layers down. And so you don't wanna put cooked pasta in this because 
you are going to be cooking it and so it will start to absorb all of the uh, liquids that you've got in it. So we're going to layer our pasta on the bottom. We're going to put a layer of our vegetables. So this recipe actually does also call for mushrooms, but I'm leaving them out because the person that doesn't like this doesn't like mushrooms. But Mary Beth will share with us some ways we could actually have incorporated mushrooms in the man I've never known. So we added a layer of our vegetables. Now we're going to add a layer of our tomato sauce. So you are hitting your red part of the rainbow here. You're hitting your green part of the rainbow here. And this is a meal that you can put on and then have it ready by dinner time. Or put it on during the morning and have it ready by the time you're ready to eat lunch. We'll add a little more lasagna noodles in here. So you could add a little bit more. You could add some protein by adding meat to it, but this particular recipe didn't call for meat. It was a veggie one. So that's why we just left our veggies in here. Oh, we forgot our cheese layer. Hold on, we're gonna move our noodles. And add our cheese. So, I just went ahead and bought, bought shredded cheese and we'll, you'll just sprinkle it. So you're just alternating your layers. Now we'll just lay our rice back on top of our cheese. That would have been a bad thing to forget with our lasagna. The cheese is giving you the dairy portion of my plate, you're getting your wheat portion, with the lasagna, because this is actually ground rice lasagna. And then you're getting your veggie part of my plate with your spinach and zucchini. I don't think you, let's see, I'll show you the zucchini. There are zucchinis. They're cut into little pieces. So, the recipe card, I'll drop in the comments so that you see, can see the recipe and have exactly what you need. But this is a pretty simple way to get your lasagna put together. So no need to necessarily buy a frozen one because this kind of allows you to control exactly what you're putting in it. So we'll add, we'll spread it out a little bit. There we go. Then we'll add our cheese on top. Then we will cover, except I don't know where my lid went, it with our lid. And we have our lasagna all ready to go. So I'm going to switch you back to. finished lasagna. So remember I didn't use lasagna noodles on this one. So you can use whatever kind of noodles that you actually have in your pantry and it would be perfectly fine. 
So that is your healthy recipe for this tasty success. Now, Mary Beth is going to share us some really cool different picky eater tips for parents, but she'll phrase it a little different for you. So here we go with Mary Beth. All right. Thank you so much. Are the slides doing what they need to do, you think? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So we all know and have seen this face before, whether it's been our child or ourself or a grandchild or a neighbor. Um, there are lots of times where kids eat something regularly and suddenly they don't want to eat it anymore. And that can be really frustrated as the person who's trying to help them be good eaters and get good nutrition. And if this was you, you might also be wanting to try to get more healthy foods in your diet and be confused about how to make them more palatable, even for adults. So I just wanted to share some facts about picky eating. And so many times um, kids start to fight back a little bit, like they were really good eaters beforehand, and then they stopped being good eaters um, around that 18 month or two years, at least in our mind. And a lot of times that's because um, we're programmed like biologically to not prefer bitter foods because back in the day, if we ate something bitter, it might be poisonous and we might die. And so that's one, that's one thing. And then another thing is around that age, children really want to start exhibiting some amount of independence. And so they just say no, their favorite word becomes no, even if they didn't necessarily not like that food. And so those are just some background things that are good to be aware of. But another fact, and somehow the color on my slide got messed up, but less than 10% of Americans get the recommended servings of fruits and vegetables every day. And so it's really important that we do what we can to make those things more appealing so we can get more in our diet to help us be strong and healthy for years and years. Um, so healthy eating patterns typically involve eating lots of different colors. So you've seen a lot of our programming, whether it's Becca's or mine, really focus on eating the rainbow. And one thing that's really nice about that is that it makes it more exciting already because we eat with our eyes. And so being able to get a variety of colors helps, but the colors actually come from different nutrients vitamins and minerals that help each of our organs function. And so sometimes learning the benefits of those colors to tell our children is what really makes it so we're excited to eat it rather than saying you should eat this because it's healthy, because that doesn't motivate me as someone who knows what's healthy. It doesn't motivate most adults. And it certainly isn't going to motivate kids, but saying you should eat this food because it's red. This tomato is red and it helps your heart. And if you have a healthy heart, what does that mean? It means you can run and jump and play and live to be a hundred. Don't you want to do that? And so that can be more convincing in a different way. Um, another thing that people don't always know is there's this thing called um, the division of responsibilities when it comes to feeding and learning to eat and eat well. And so um, this um, expert in feeding children, I think she's recently passed away, but her name was Ellen Satter. And she started this feeding dynamics model that says the adults, whether it's a parent or a guardian or a, a teacher or whatever, they control what's available. They're the ones going to the store and buying things and putting them in the cart with their money and things like that. You control when it's available. So are we eating right now? Or are we not eating right now? Are we waiting till dinner time? Are we having this snack? You control the eating environment. Like, are we eating at a table? Or are we eating on our laps? Or are we eating in the car? And you control your eating behavior. You control what you are willing to eat, what your face looks like when you're eating certain foods and things like that. And then kids control what they choose out of your offerings and how much to eat. So if you stop um, thinking that it's your responsibility to make sure your kid clears their plate, that can actually clear up a lot of fights and make kids more willing to try different things. And so it's all about that willingness to try and different numbers of exposure. What can I do if my child or um, the kids in my life aren't eating well? Um, one thing is to try to make these healthy foods like tomatoes or whatever that you want them to eat familiar. There are studies out there that say it takes six to 15 tries before kids will accept a certain food. And so that doesn't mean that you serve them broccoli every day straight for two weeks. And so you better like this at the end of two weeks. It just means that if broccoli is a food that you like or a food that you want your family to enjoy, maybe every so often, every two or three weeks, you put it on the table and you have some, and maybe you try it roasted one time and steamed another time and in a, a Chinese stir fry or something like that a third time. And so it just becomes like, oh, this is a normal food that people eat. That can be very helpful. And my favorite tip is to make healthy eating fun. And so I'll have a lot more slides about that, about changing the shape or adding color or combining it with familiar foods. 
another thing that we don't always think about is showing how much you enjoy those foods. And it doesn't have to be in a gimmicky way, but the truth is if you rarely eat vegetables, it's not the most realistic goal to think that your child will eat vegetables without you at least being willing to try some. If you're always saying yuck, or you're around people that are always saying yuck to healthy foods, it's going to be a really hard hill to climb. And there's research out there that shows that even babies who can't talk have some deep in their memories about what your face looked like when you were eating broccoli or something like that. And then the final tip is to really eat together as frequently as possible. So some people really find it easier when things are hectic to eat breakfast together than dinner. Um, we love having people eat dinner together, um, but it's just kind of thinking about, is it possible for us to eat together? We have a big family, but only half of us are available right now. Well, if three of us are available, let's eat with those three and getting into those habits because the research says that families that eat together those kids typically eat 1.5 more servings of fruits and vegetables on average. We're having the discussion while you're talking about picky eaters of my mother, when we were little, made us eat an apple carrot like slaw mixture. Oh. And forced, well, said we couldn't get up from the table until we ate it. And my brother ate it and told my mommy he was going to throw up. Threw up all over the table, and now he won't even touch carrots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That is real, though. And so it's just interesting. And my parents did the same thing where they did the, you will sit at this table until you finish this food. And just the research really says that doesn't end up having the outcomes that we want. And so it's probably better not to force and not to make eating together that high-stress environment but rather trying to stay as calm as you can and asking them to at least try things. Um, and that can be one way to do that. But that's it another thing I like to tell people. A lot of people think you must like every fruit and vegetable to be healthy. And that just isn't true. It is not required. There are certain fruits and vegetables that I don't like, but I'm not necessarily going to share that widely in these programs. But just thinking, if you like things that are two or three different colors and you're getting a variety of nutrients in that way, that's okay. If you just have three or four that you rotate between, and sometimes kids only eat one or two vegetables, you're not failing as a parent. Your kids are getting pretty good nutrition. You just want to try what you can to increase variety over time. These are some of my most favorite um, tips on how to make healthy food fun. Can you? So one is pairing with the familiar food like pizza or muffins or pancakes. Another one is to just change what it looks like, change that presentation. So putting something on a stick, everything tastes better on a stick. I've done things where I put um, like a mozzarella cheese stick. I cut that into little pieces and I put tomatoes on it and then I painted it with pesto or olive oil or ranch dressing. And then just having it on a stick was a lot more exciting than trying to eat um, baby um, the little cherry tomatoes on their own, but serving it in a pita or making a salsa or something, just making it a little different than just that whole fruit or vegetable all the time. A dipping sauce is one that we know. We know that kids will eat a lot more things if they can dip it in ranch or ketchup and that's fine. And expanding that idea of different things that we can dip in. Some kids dip, I don't know, chicken nuggets and carrots in applesauce. And that might sound weird to us, but both of those things can be healthy. And so if it's helping them get their nutrition, let them dip all day long. Um, another thing is changing the shape. And so I'm going to show you with my other camera that soon. So um, cutting something into coins or noodles or zoodles, waffle fries, crinkle fries, sticks, or even shredded. Um, another one is different cooking techniques. So if you always eat it raw or steamed, maybe trying it roasted or sauteed. Um, or if you always eat it cooked, maybe trying to see if it is something that's okay to eat raw. Not everything is safe to eat raw. Um, and then another thing is changing the temperature. So maybe freezing it or eating it raw, like I mentioned. Um, I love talking about eating the rainbow. And so I've done a few different ideas for all of these foods, everything from strawberries and bell peppers to cabbage and eggplant. So I'll have my information at the end if anyone wants to reach out or needs recipes. A lot of them are on our the Rockdale County Facebook page, um, UGA Extension Rockdale County, but we've done We've gotten kids um, excited to eat everything from summer squash to eggplant. So I think that's a win. Um, other ways to make healthy eating fun that we don't always think about is involving the kids. So giving them an apron or a spoon, even if they're really little, letting them kind of bang around on Tupperware and things like that, giving it a fun name and letting them customize. So if there's a way that they can add their own cheese or toppings to a pizza or a pasta or a burrito bowl or something like that, that's a great idea.
um, some fun and inexpensive tools out there. I thought I had them at the office and they're really at my house. So the one on the bottom left is a wavy cutter. So it's basically the blade is just like S shaped kind of, and it helps. That's what they make waffle fries and crinkle fries out of. So that just makes it more fun. Um, even if it's just a carrot or a zucchini. Um, they make these, they're basically lettuce knives, but they've rebranded them as um, kids plastic chef knives. And it's a great way for young kids to start cutting things without you having to worry about if they're really going to get themselves hurt. And then um, the bottom one is a spiralizer and they come in different price ranges, but you can get this kind that's kind of the countertop kind for 10 to $20. And um, it should last for a long time and you can make your own noodles out of sweet potatoes, zucchini, squash, all that kind of stuff. So here are some pictures of things that I'd made in the past. We made eggplant pizza. Um, we made muffins with sweet potatoes in them. We did um, zucchini in different shapes and things like that. We made spaghetti out of sweet potatoes. So there's so many different things that you can do putting these things to work. You can see we also made salsa out of strawberries. Um, we made slinkies out of cucumbers. We just cut wedges of cabbage and let the kids put the olive oil on them with a little um, basting brush and then sprinkle spices on it. So those little things that we don't think mean that much, if the kids get to do them themselves, it's just like that shake and bake commercial. If they get to say they helped, they're much more excited to at least try it. And then if they try it, you can get closer to that number of tries it takes to in all likelihood accept that food. And, and another tip is to kind of hide vegetables or add more vegetables to the foods that you're preparing. We definitely don't want you to rely on all hidden vegetables all the time. We do want to have kids who are able to see a vegetable on their plate and not freak out. But some of them have more mild flavors than others like cauliflower, spinach, butternut squash, and sometimes even carrots and broccoli. So I have some examples to share. Um, so smoothies is one that people think about a lot. They can be super nutritious. They also can be kind of sugar bombs. So we want to say if you wouldn't give your child or yourself that much of the, all the things in one sitting, you don't want to have it liquefied and then assume that it's going to be different. Um, but things like spinach and cauliflower, or even like steamed zucchini, if there's no seasoning on it, will practically disappear in a smoothie, especially if there's something um, vibrantly colored like a blueberry in it. And then practically any fruit is going to make a smoothie delicious and add sweetness without having to add um, additional sugar. You'll have that natural sugar in the fruit. Um, spaghetti is another one. So you want to, when you're looking at sauces, try to pick ones that have full servings of vegetables. But Becca said I might have a tip about mushrooms, and I do. So if you cut up things like onions and carrots and mushrooms as fine as you can, like kind of dice them and saute them. If you did a meat sauce with beef or turkey or something like that, you can't tell what chunk is what. And so that's one way that you can do it. Um, you can always puree those things if you think the chunks are still going to be really noticeable. Um, if you have leftover roasted vegetables from the night before, you can blitz those up in your spaghetti sauce and no one will know because that robust color of the sauce, that deep red, is really good for hiding things. Um, otherwise, casseroles are things that it can really boost your nutrition and taste great and make you stay, even if you don't know the vegetables are there, it makes you full faster because of the fiber and the nutrients that are in there. So things like summer squash and zucchini. Um, can go into casseroles without changing the taste or the texture. Butternut squash or cauliflower or yellow squash. There are lots of recipes out there for um, macaroni and cheese or the sauce that has that. You can try replacing a third of the potato, mashed potatoes with cauliflower. Anything more than that, it's really probably going to taste like cauliflower, but you're adding a different vegetable that has different nutrients in it. And maybe even putting mushrooms or pureed carrots into your burger for extra moistness and flavor. And what I like about that is most of us get enough protein, maybe even more than enough protein. So adding these vegetables helps bulk it up and helps reduce our grocery bill. And then muffins and breads are another one of my favorite. Everything from carrots to sweet potatoes and apples and even spinach can be um, hidden in a muffin. And so I have a recipe that I got from the internet that has um, a whole bag of spinach in it, the five or six ounces of spinach, and they are bright green. But my tip before of giving it a fun name, if you call it a leprechaun muffin or the Wicked Witch of the West or a Hulk muffin, that's going to go over a lot quicker and better than a spinach muffin, especially around Halloween. People eat crazy things that are crazy colors that they would never eat. And so why not make those colors be real foods instead of necessarily food coloring? Not that food coloring is bad, but some of, some of the things that exist already are great in nutrition and boosting color, which can make things more fun. So those were all my slides for you. So um, 
that's my information. So just like you're on the Crisp County Extension page, Rockdale County has a page as well. Um, so from that, I'm going to switch over to my phone camera and show you some of these tips and um, tools in action. Show you um, these little toothpicks. You can do these kind of skewers or you could do um, these colored toothpicks. And this is the kind of thing that um, if you had blueberries or tomatoes, putting them on a stick can be a lot more fun if you wanted to. Um, also, having kids have their own wooden spoon. This is Rockdale 4-H, but I have a spoon that my mom gave me from when I was young um, that has my name on it like for five, when I was five years old and I still have it. So having something like that that's customized but inexpensive is a great way to get kids excited. Even if they're just stirring an empty bowl, them being able to have this in the kitchen while you're making dinner can be really good. Um, obviously I have an apron. So having kids have their own apron so they can be dressed and trying to um, feel like they're a chef too can be really great. And then I have some muffin liners, which you could use um, to hold little servings of fruits and vegetables. Maybe that you show them, this is what I mean by a, a try, but also that you could make sweet potato muffins, carrot muffins, blueberry muffins, et cetera. Um, I wanted to show you, a lot of us buy baby carrots. Baby carrots are not bad, um, but sometimes it's fun to try something different. And so with the same knife, if I had a wavy cutter, I would show you how to make crinkle fries or um, waffle fries. Um, but you can see this carrot, if I start cutting it on the diagonal, I can make pretty big chips as time goes on, um, which is a lot different and a lot more fun than um, just baby carrots. Not that you can't buy them, but just changing it up sometimes or cutting them into these stick shapes or something. You can do the same thing with zucchini. This is a food that not everyone thinks about eating raw, but it tastes great dipped in marinara or in ranch or in hummus or whatever. So trying different things. So doing like sticks that are better for dipping could be one way to do that. And just seeing if you like the kind of mild flavor. Some people who don't like cucumber might really like eating these zucchini sticks. And then also you could do, um, the chips with this and you can get really big ones and it's not as um, crunchy or hard as a carrot. So if some kids are really big on texture and they're like, it's too hard, trying something that's a little softer could be really helpful. And then I will show as well, if you're not used to the whole um, zoodle thing, um, this is my, let's see, spiralizer. Um, and you just cut the ends off of both of your zucchini ends and then you put it on one side and you push this part together and you kind of have to hold this down as you go but you push forward and it just kind of spins and so kids have an excited time if they hold these handles um, getting it to spin and basically you've made noodles out of zucchini which is really fun and so you can eat this raw you can eat it for a snack. You don't have to cook this or make this into pasta sauce if you don't want to. Um, a lot of people I find have complained a little bit about zucchini noodles because they really turn mushy. And I, my recommendation is to cook them as minimally as possible, um, microwaving for a minute or maybe two and adding them to your warm sauce versus trying to saute or boil them if you still want a little bit of bite. But things like carrots um, and sweet potatoes might actually be better and you can actually spiralize carrots as well. We can see how well it works. Um, but people spiralize all kinds of things. And I got this at Aldi. They have them at different times throughout the year for about $10, maybe 12. So harder things are harder. So your kids can help you with things that are soft. But this one is having a little bit of a harder time. So you might not have as thick, it's, it all depends. And you can treat it as a science experiment. If your carrot is gonna spiralize, you can try different things. Um, I think maybe a fatter carrot might work better. But one of my other favorite hacks for um, carrots is shredding them. And then using that fun name tip that I mentioned, um, this is just a simple cheese grater or a box grater. Um, this is one of the things that I don't necessarily recommend having your children help you with because if you're like me and you cook a lot, you probably cut yourself on a grater or a peeler. And there's something about a knife that kids understand is sharp. There's something about that. They know that that's sharp and you could put color coding on the handle that's like, this is what you touch. 
you don't touch this part and that's really good. But the grater is something that as you grate, it's really easy to grate your fingers. And it's just hard to get across what is safe and what isn't safe for a kid to do. And so at one of my rainbow programs, I actually shredded carrots um, just like this. And I said, look, it's carrot confetti. And kids were just sitting there and they were pinching it and eating it with no sauce whatsoever on it. So you would be shocked at just how changing the shape or giving it a name or giving a dipping sauce makes all the difference in the world for kids being willing to try new foods and maybe even accept and like them. So they choose them on their own. So those are my tips about um, picky eating. And I hope that it was helpful and gives you some inspiration that way. Mary Beth. So while you were talking, I pulled, this is what my zucchini one looks like that makes noodles. So just to let y'all know that they come in all kinds of different shapes. So mine, you stick it on there and then you twist it. So I just pulled it out while you were talking. Welcome back to Healthier Together Workouts with Grace. We're so excited to be part of the Tasty Success Kitchen with Cordell Chris County Library and Chris County Extension. Thank you guys so much for having us again and happy Thursday. Today we are gonna be doing our tomato themed workouts and I'm going to be doing each exercise for about five to 10 second intervals, but you guys should be sure to do about 60 seconds at home. Remember you want about a five to 10 minute workout. You need about 60 minutes a day. Let's jump into it. Hey guys, today is tomato themed, so we're gonna start with pizza stretches. You're gonna to wanna to start with your legs in a V, like a pizza slice, and the first thing we're gonna do is knead the dough. So you're gonna put your hands into fists and you're going to make sure that you knead that dough nice and good so you have a nice tender dough for your crust. Make sure you knead it. And as you knead your dough, you should feel a little bit of a stretch in your legs. Good job. Next, we are going to make sure we spread our tomato sauce on our pizza, that tomatoey goodness. Make sure you spread that sauce out nice and smooth. You make sure you use both hands, really exaggerate it. Want to get your pizza sauce everywhere. Good job. Next, we're going to add our cheese. So you're going to add that cheese. Make sure you get it all over. And then you're going to add your favorite pizza toppings. My favorite pizza toppings are mushrooms and black olives, but you can add whatever you want. Just make sure you get them on there. Maybe some pepperoni, maybe some anchovies, maybe some pineapple, whatever you like, okay? So you can get it all on there. Next and last of all, we're going to bake our pizza. So we're going to put our feet together. We're going to lean back a little bit and we're gonna shake our legs up until that pizza is made. And when you know that your pizza is done, you can go ahead and eat. Let's move on to our next tomato themed exercise, which is spaghetti and meatball curl ups. We're gonna start all curled up like a meatball and we're gonna stretch out wide like spaghetti pasta. And then we're gonna roll up like a meatball and then we're gonna stretch out wide like spaghetti pasta and like a meatball, and now I'm pasta, and now I'm meatball, and now I'm pasta. And do it until you're all ready for your pasta themed recipe. The next part of our tomato themed workout today will be a pizza workout. So we're gonna go back to kneading our dough, but we're gonna do it a little differently this time. We're gonna start with kneading the dough squats. So you're gonna put your feet about shoulder width apart. You're gonna put your arms out in front of you, make them into fists like we're gonna knead the dough. And we're gonna squat and knead the dough and come up and squat and knead your dough and come up and squat and knead your dough, okay? Make sure you're getting your thighs about parallel with the ground. You can go as fast as you want or as slow as you want and do it as many times as feels good. Next, we're gonna go into spinning that pizza dough, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna twist our arms one way, and then we're gonna spin them back the other way. Spin that pizza dough. Gotta get it nice and thin or it's not gonna taste too good, you guys. Next, we're gonna spread the sauce by standing on one foot and spreading the sauce. So we're gonna twist. If you fall down, that's okay. We'll get a little sauce on us, but no big deal. We're gonna spread the sauce 
and then we'll switch to the other side. Spread that sauce. Good job, you guys. Spread that sauce. All right, next you've got to grate the cheese for your pista, so we're going to go ahead and put our arms back out in front of us, feet about shoulder length apart, and we're gonna squat and up and squat and up and pretend we're grating that cheese for our pasta. After all, there is no pizza without cheese. Let's make that cheese for the pizza. Here we go, woohoo! Grate that cheese, you guys, up and down. We're gonna do the trees grating up and down. Next, we're going to add the toppings by jumping. So we're gonna start up front, go to the right, go to the back, go to the left, okay? In a big circle, add your toppings. Maybe some pepperonis, maybe some mushrooms. For our last exercise, we're gonna have an argument in our kitchen about how you say tomato. On one side, we're gonna say tomato, and on the other side, we're gonna say tomato. On this side, tomato, and on this side, tomato. Tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. Thank you guys so much for joining us this week again. Happy Thursday. I really hope you guys are exhausted, ready for story time. We'll take it back to you, Becca, and thank you so much. So our next thing is we are going to have our story read to us. So let me get that up real quick. Hello, and thank you for joining us once again for virtual story time. We have a wonderful book by Lauren Child, and it's entitled, I Will Never Not Ever Eat a Tomato. It's a very exciting book. Shall we get started? I have this little sister, Lola. She is small and very funny. Sometimes I have to keep an eye on her. Sometimes mom and dad ask me to give Lola her dinner. This is difficult because she is a very fussy eater. Lola won't eat carrots, of course. She says carrots are for rabbits. I say, what about peas? Lola says, peas are too small and too green. One day I played a good trick on her. Lola was sitting at the table waiting for her dinner and she said, I do not eat peas or carrots or potatoes or mushrooms or spaghetti or eggs or sausages. I do not eat cauliflower or cabbage or baked beans or bananas or oranges. And I am not fond of apples or rice or cheese or fish sticks. And I absolutely will never not ever eat a tomato. My sister hates tomatoes. And I said, that is lucky because we are not having any of those things. We are not going to eat any peas or carrots or potatoes or mushrooms or spaghetti or eggs or sausages. There will be no cauliflower or cabbage or baked beans or bananas or oranges. We don't have any apples or rice or cheese or fish sticks and certainly no tomatoes. Lola looked at the table. Then why are those carrots there, Charlie? I don't ever eat carrots. And I said, oh. You think these are carrots? These are not carrots. These are orange twiglets from Jupiter. They look just like carrots to me, said Lola. But how can they be carrots, I said. Carrots don't grow on Jupiter. That's true, said Lola. Well, I might just try one if they're all the way from Jupiter. Hmm, not bad, she said, and took another bite. Then Lola saw some peas. I don't eat peas, said Lola. I said, these are not peas. Of course they are not. These are green drops from Greenland. They are made out of green and fall from the sky. But I don't eat green things, Lola said. Oh, goody, I said, I'll have your share. Green drops are so incredibly rare. Well, maybe I'll nibble just one or two. Oh, said Lola, quite tasty. Next, Lola saw the potato. 
I will not eat potatoes. So don't even try. Not even mashed. Oh, this isn't mashed potato. People often think that, but no. This is cloud fluff from the pointiest peak of Mount Fuji. Oh, said Lola. In that case, a large helping for me. I love to eat cloud. Charlie, she said, those look like fish sticks to me and I would never eat a fish stick. I know that. These are not fish sticks. These are ocean nibbles from the supermarkets under the sea. Mermaids eat them all the time. Oh, I went to that supermarket one time with mom. Yes, I know the ones. I think I've had them before, Lola said, gobbling. Are there any more? And then she said, Charlie, will you pass me one of those? And I said, what, one of those? And Lola said, yes, Charlie, one of those. And I couldn't believe my eyes because guess what she was pointing at? The tomatoes. And I said, are you sure? Really? One of these? And she said, yes, of course. Moon squirters are my favorite. You didn't think they were tomatoes, did you, Charlie? Isn't that a fun book? I had so much fun reading it to you today. Once again, this is the cover of the book. It is by Lauren Child, and it is entitled, I Will Never, Not Ever, Eat a Tomato. Thanks for the story. So that was our story of the Never Have I Ever. And then, so that covers and caps a lot of what Mary Beth showed with us. And then if you remember, that was our lasagna. So it's ready for dinner. And then as we wrap up, Mary, do you have anything else you'd like to share? I just want to tell everyone that we're still doing curbside services and um, just continue to check with us about opening dates. And we hope that everyone is doing well. And if you would like to check out that book or any book that we're doing in the uh, in the print program, so you can just call the library or place the hold online. We'll be sure to get those books for you. Thank you. So our next Tasty Success will be in two weeks. So in two Thursdays from now, and that one we will actually be making some homemade pizza with. So we look forward to having you join us and make sure that you follow along. So if you want to see some recipes and other nutrition and even other facts that get dropped, um, my Facebook page is a good one to watch, which is the UGA Extension Chris County. Uh, Mary Beth's is another one to watch and hers is UGA Extension Rockdale County. And then for some recipes and nutrition-based information, if you go follow Food eTalk, which is where our vegetable lasagna pizza, uh, lasagna came from, it's where our pizza came from too, but that's where a lot of our recipes are coming from. It's what Food eTalk has pulled together. So thank you guys for joining us and we look forward to seeing you. And if you've got any questions, if you'll leave them in the comment section, we will get back to you. Thanks guys. Thank you. This was fun. I'm looking forward to the next one.